Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar series, where today we'll be looking to join and focus on how to intraday trade US indices. My name's Paul, I'm your uh, guide for our session, and we've got lots to cover. But as always, thank you for joining us. And if you have uh, any particular uh, questions or if you have any particular thoughts on intraday trading US indices, then please feel free to share them with us in the chat box. We, uh, we love the interaction. Or if you're watching this later on the uh, Admiral Markets YouTube channel or uh, social media channels, please feel free to uh, give us a like or please feel free to uh, drop us questions. Uh, and we'll be very, very happy to, uh, to help support you in your uh, trading journey. So what am I going to talk about today? Well, you know, we have touched upon US indices in uh, previous sessions, but today we're going to focus primarily on uh, how you can trade them on an intraday basis. We'll have a little look at a few ideas for uh, good trading setups. I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use correlations to help identify good trading environments. And, you know, we'll have a little talk about some of the simple tactics that we have shared before that uh, you can utilize to help build yourselves a uh, trading plan. If we have time, then what we'll do is we'll look to switch across to the Admiral Markets uh, MetaTrader 4 platform. So uh, please stay with us as, uh, you know, that's always useful to be able to look at uh, live markets at the end of a, uh, at the end of a session. So, you know, if you can, uh, if you've not uh, seen uh, any of the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar before, then I uh, implore you to go and uh, make use of uh, the fantastic uh, educational information that Admiral Markets has provided. My colleagues, Jens and Marcus, deliver. You can see there in the chat box, there is the uh, uh, link there to be able to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And, and as we say, if you have uh, particular questions about sessions, please put them in there. If you have suggestions either for uh, future webinars, some things that you'd like to see us address, then we would, uh, we would love to hear that feedback from you. And as always, you know, we're uh, here to help support you after the webinar. Uh, and we can do that by uh, joining the exclusive Trading Spotlight community on Traders Yard, where you'll see myself and my colleagues, Marcus and Jens. We will put in their uh, posts there about our trades or about our ideas that, you know, we want to share with you or just further information on the concepts that we discuss in the Trading Spotlight webinars. Uh, and you're very welcome to join us there, okay? And you can join the uh, Trading Spotlight community there at the bottom, as you see, tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash 312. And I'm sure that my uh, assistant will place that up in the chat box as well for you. But uh, please feel free to come and join us. I'll be there for the, uh, the remainder of the, the day. Happy to answer your questions about trading and markets. It's, uh, it's an eventful, uh, an eventful day every day in the markets but uh, over the last couple of days we've had some uh, interesting events and uh, I posted a, uh, a post there earlier in the trading spotlight community there just to sort of draw your attention to what uh, what we've been looking at and actually what we're going to cover in today's webinar as well. For those who don't know me, my name is uh, Paul Wallace. I've traded for uh, many years. Okay, I've traded for funds, traded for high net worth clients, uh, and also mentored and coached traders uh, down the years. Primarily, I look to trade FX indices and commodities. And for my kind of swing and position trades, I'm a trend trader and I'm a mean reversion trader on the intraday basis, which as you'll see today, I'll show you how that kind of influences the way that, uh, that I uh, particularly look at, uh, at markets. And uh, as if on demand, my uh, wonderful assistant there has just uh, placed in a, a link to the Traders Yard group there. So please feel free to, uh, to join us there and sign up. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic portal. It's a fantastic uh, uh, amount of great information there. My uh, colleagues, Marcus and Jens, they provide some fantastic uh, uh, sort of posts there on an almost hourly and daily basis. So please, you're very welcome to join us there. Uh, and as always, you know, you can, if you want to know more about uh, Admiral Markets, well, you know, as you can read there, they're a Forex and CFD broker with over 8,000 financial instruments, and they have a uh, huge uh, uh, global expertise with local support. They are uh, regulated across a, uh, a range of environments, and they provide very competitive spreads on some of the most popular trading products like Euro, Dollar, and DAX, and you're able to engage with markets using the uh, world's most popular trading platforms, MT4 and MT5. And if you have any questions about that then please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be happy to uh, give you some insight and guidance on Admiral Markets. 
But today, ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about intraday trading U.S. indices. So uh, it'd be uh, interesting for me to, to know that, uh, um, you know, who, if uh, any people already have experience of trading, intraday trading U.S. indices, maybe it's something that you're interested in, maybe it's something that you've never considered, maybe it's something that you've actually, you know, you already utilize. And if you do, then, you know, please, it would be uh, really helpful to me to understand, you know, what your uh, experience levels are, because that means I can always uh, sort of <clears throat> sort of temper my uh, temper my uh, delivery to sort of try and help the most people that we can who are here with us in the rooms. But as the slide says, that trading U.S. indices on an intraday basis is an attractive proposition to many traders. The volatility, liquidity, and big moves in indices can be fascinating to, to new traders. Uh, however, like we shared previously in the webinars on intraday trading effects, it's important to be thoroughly prepared for this endeavor. Today, we're going to provide you a simple introduction to trading U.S. indices on an intraday basis so you are prepared for what awaits. And, you know, and I really want to stress that point to you, ladies and gentlemen, that, you know, like the intraday trading FX webinars, which we've delivered, which you can find in the, uh, in the sort of archive of webinars for uh, Trading Spotlight across the social media channels, you know, intraday trading FX is very possible, but it's important for you to be prepared. And the same goes for trading U.S. indices. It's very possible but you have to be prepared, okay? And it's almost that kind of preparation you put in beforehand can have a huge uh, impact upon your ability to be uh, consistently successful in your engagement with uh, intraday trading US indices. So, you know, and this is, uh, this probably slide is, it represents my own kind of personal views. This is from my own personal experience of trading that I'll share with you. But what I have seen from, you know, from years of experience is that, there are times of the year when you can focus on one asset class over the others. So at parts, sometimes of the year, at some parts of the year that, you know, I find intraday trading FX to be, uh, to be not necessarily easy, but it is, uh, it is, it's more achievable. It's more simple. The way the market moves, the way my uh, setups up here seem to be a great deal more. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a little easier. Okay. In terms of the, uh, the way of engagement. And you'll find that at other times of the years that might differ. Okay. Sometimes you might find that, you know, it's easier to intraday trade equities, sometimes indices, sometimes it's easier to trade fixed income. And for other people, you might find intraday trading is, uh, you know, is easier on, uh, on cryptocurrencies if you're a trader of that. Sometimes it'll be clear of the times it's not. I, I wish I could give you some, uh, some real hard and fast rules about when one sort of asset class uh, sort of uh, is suitable over the other. Uh, I, I can't. That's not to say there's probably isn't data out there to help you, but but I've just found that you know there are periods of uh, periods of the year when it's you know easier to trade intraday FX, uh, and other times it's easier to trade into uh, intraday indices. It just might well be that you know what's going on on a bigger picture in in those particular markets. It just uh, just allows it easier for me to sort of see trends or allow easier for me to see reversals easier for to see the one or two particular setups that I like to um, I like to see but unfortunately I can't give you a hard and fast rule like trade intraday FX between April and May and trade indices between you know sort of uh, August and November unfortunately it doesn't uh, it doesn't work as clear cut as that but with a little bit of experience a little bit of preparation what you will see is you will start to you'll start to get into the rhythm of that of those markets and start to see where and when you know, the best opportunities are presenting themselves for yourselves but today it's all about intraday trading us indices so let's have a little look at what uh, what our options are and, and how they all stack up so you know as i said it's all about preparation beforehand you know and part of that is having the right pre-market routine and you know i sort of i, I pass this off on quite a few of the webinars we do because it's almost like i need you to do this until it becomes almost like an automatic response okay until it becomes just just so natural to you to do it that you know years from now whenever you open a chart okay you'll be going through that particular same almost pre-trading routine you know and if you're going to be trading price action trading plan it should be simple clear especially when intraday trading okay in particular us indices so you know we've been through that just very simple routine okay so whenever you open a chart just identify significant levels in the the monthly weekly and the daily charts which i know new traders might say well hang on a minute paul but aren't we intraday trading why, why do i want to know those levels trust me you do 
All right, so you want to know where those significant levels are. You don't want to be buying into resistance. You don't want to be selling into support, okay? You want to be aware of those levels, okay? And we want to see, you know, how does price action maneuver at those levels, okay? Does it slice through it and just keep on going? Or, or does the market actually spend a bit of time consolidating there? Or does it break and come back and retest? Because actually then, you know, there's, a, there's, there's particular setups that hang on around that. You can look at, you know, entering trade as sort of at the break of a candle. That's, that's the way I sort of suggest, and I'll focus on that a little bit more in a few slides time. Just making sure that you always trade with the stop loss and the stop loss is at the other side of the candle. You know, you're never risking more than 1% of your trading capital on a, yeah, on a trade. You know, and that really you're looking for, a, you know, a, a healthy reward to risk in your trade. And that's normally meaning, you know, sort of two to one or above or trading to the next particular significant level. And I say they're rinse and repeat, but you know, it, it is become, as I says, it's almost, you know, you has to have a little routine there that just almost becomes automatic for you as a, as a trader, especially intraday, okay, you know, because the things happen quite fast, all right, things can change very quickly. And so it becomes important for you to be able to sort of um, amend and, uh, uh, you know, sort of adapt to how that market changes. As it, as it goes through the particular session. So, you know, there are plenty of uh, webinars there on the Trading Spotlight series that are okay over the last few months that talk more about price action trading plans. They talk about trading routines. If you haven't made yourself available of them, then I, you know, please, I can totally, uh, totally sort of, uh, uh, sort of confirm that, you, you know, you should be sort of watching those. Okay, they're there, they're there for your use. Make the time go watch them read them make good notes start to build your own little pre-market routines and preparations because it will help you enormously in your trading journey that's what we want from trading spotlight okay we want to be able to to help you advance as uh, as, as swiftly uh, as as you can through your uh, through your trading journey But, you know, uh, as I say, it's, it's, you know, and it's important that, you know, you can have sort of discipline in place when you're intraday trading US indices. So before you're engaging in any of them, you know, we just have to have a few rules and expectations, okay? Risk management is absolutely key, you honor it. Because things can happen very fast, things can turn very fast, okay? We live in a world where you can have the most uh, wonderful, beautiful trade setup in the world that looks like it's just gonna work out fantastically for you. Uh, and then five minutes later, uh, Donald Trump comes out and tweets something and the markets all sort of completely change and turn. That happens. All traders are, uh, are, are open to that. So it just makes it even more important that you honor your risk management. It's important that you know what news is coming out for that session. And if you don't, well, then be sure to check the Admiral Markets website. There's plenty of details on there, okay? But also there is a, a calendar in there. And it's important that you want to know what news is coming out in that particular session. You just don't want to be sort of putting trades on just a few minutes before big major US news announcements, because I assure you that is uh, not the smart way to uh, actually trade. Make sure you conduct your analysis before trading, okay? So just take a little bit of time open a few charts you know as we said on the uh, routine there on the previous slide just make sure your analysis done there before you actually just sit down to pull the trigger on your trade and resist the temptation to trade out of session and i will show you that a bit more when we go onto the slides and look at the charts okay what i mean for that is that you know you know you're trading us indices so the best time to trade them are primarily during the us session okay so we'll look at that in particular in a few slides time yeah, this might sound as a, as a pretty um, pretty basic, pretty simplistic question, but, you know, ensure you've got a good internet connection, okay? If you're trying to sort of, uh, um, if you're trying to, you know, if you're in a busy public place trying to uh, sort of uh, attach your laptop or your uh, tablet up to your phone to try and possibly get a connection, uh, I would uh, I would suggest that perhaps that's maybe not the... Uh, they're not, not the most robust of internet connections upon which you want to be doing intraday trading, ladies and gentlemen. You know, uh, for myself, when I intraday trade, I you know, ensure that I'm sat at my uh, trading desk where I've got, uh, you know, I've got good IT, I've got a good internet connection, uh, and that allows me to, you know, it's just one less thing I don't have to worry about, okay, when I'm, uh, you know, I want to have all of my, uh, all of my, uh, <laughs> cognitive facilities focused upon the actual market not on whether my internet connection is dropping in and out and ensure that you're rested and prepared for the session 
it's like you know, it's like a, a football player going out to, uh, to to play a match, or a Formula One driver, or a opera singer before you know before a uh, a, a big opera. Okay, you know, you're you're there to perform. You're there to do yourself, you know, the best justice you can as a as a trader. So, you know, ensure you're rested and prepared for the session. For those of us trading in uh, in you know from let's say from Europe, you know, in other parts of the world, well, you know, you're very fortunate that when you're trading U.S. indices, it's it's into our afternoon. So, you know, it ha- you know it, you should you should be well rested and prepared for your uh, for the afternoon trading session. Okay, I would uh, I would suggest if if you aren't, so there's, there's, maybe you need to have a little conversation with yourself about your uh, about your late night routines. But uh, but you know, for most of us, it has the opportunity to be rested and prepared for your session because you know you want to do yourself justice. So what we normally find is that very often intraday uh, sort of indices traders, they kind of normally focus on two specific sessions. So they'll very often trade the euro indices in the mornings, that's euro timing. So really you're looking from any time, really from about 7 a.m. London sort of, you know, or even 7 a.m. sort of European times through for that uh, through till about from 7 till 10 in the mornings. Uh, and then looking to trade U.S. indices in the afternoon. I appreciate that, you know, we might have people joining us here in the Pacific. And so actually for them, it might be that actually trading U.S. indices is their morning session, uh, you know, or it might be that, you know, then they're, they're trading sort of some of the uh, Pacific indices, maybe the Hong Kong index or the uh, Chinese index or the uh, Japanese index. But primarily what you will find is many, many traders will trade the euro indices in the, mo- in the mornings. U.S. indices in the afternoon, and you see in particular, it's quite a lot of uh, private traders will trade the DAX 30 in the morning, and then either the Dow or the S&P in the afternoon. So we're going to look at euro indices in a future session, but today we're focusing on the U.S. indices. So you know, as I said, euro indices. You know, if you want to look at them, which is the uh, what the future uh, topic of uh, one of the very uh, upcoming new upcoming trading spotlight webinar series. But you know, if you're going to look at euro indices, okay, they've got the DAX 30 for Germany, the FTSE 100, the CAC 40 for French, the the MIB 40 for Italy, the IBEX 35, okay, for Spain, or the Stocks 50, the Euro Stocks 50, looking at the top 50 stocks in Europe. And that's a, a you know a very plausible um, opportunity for you to trade as an intraday trader and you know as i said some people will trade you know the european uh, indices in the morning before getting ready to trade the u.s indices in the afternoon but primarily what we're looking at with uh, intraday trading u.s indices is you know we have the opportunity the four kind of major indices you're going to be looking at okay is the dow 30 s p 500 nasdaq 100 and the uh, the Russell as well. Okay, the Russell is the uh, the kind of the largest of them all, and it's probably in some respects more representative of, let's say, uh, small and medium cap U.S. Uh, U.S. stocks. But what you'll find is the Dow 30, the S&P, and the Nasdaq. They are hugely popular trading instruments. Okay, the uh, absolute you know, absolute you know uh, 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 sort of bastion, so to speak, of uh, equities and indices trading is being able to trade the, the Dow 30, the S&P 500 and the, uh, the NASDAQ. Now, uh, you know, I appreciate we'll have some people who are very new here, not really uh, you know, new to trading. And, and really, the Dow 30, as the name implies, is looking at the sort of 30 biggest uh, biggest stocks by market capitalization. The, the NASDAQ 100 is uh, of the 100 biggest primarily tech stocks, okay, that are aligned with NASDAQ. And the S&P 500 is the 500 biggest stocks in uh, in the US and is seen globally as a little bit of a a bellwether of not only the US economy, but also just the general global economy, okay? So, you know, there's lots of people focusing on these uh, indices, okay, which is is both a blessing and a curse, to be honest. But uh, what we're going to do today is talk about how to understand that, how to utilize, okay, their, uh, their information. To, to basically to, to help us with our uh, with our own trading options. So, how do we trade these indices? Okay, what can be our edge as a trader? You need an edge. Okay, well, I'd say actually as a trader, you need quite a few edges, and an edge isn't just one simple thing. It can actually be three, four, five, six, seven things. The more edges you have, the the better. But we have to, as private traders, we have to look at well, what could be our edge? What could be the thing that helps us set apart from, you know, from, from everybody else? 
Uh, and when it comes to trading US indices, okay, one of the things that I kind of like to, to look at, one of the things I like to, to sort of be interested in is, is realizing that as we trade, okay, the, the increase in uh, uh, algorithmic trading is, is, is happening around us and has been happening for, well, you, you might be saying for the last 20, 30 years, but certainly over the last 10, 15 years, okay, that has increased and we find that algorithmic trading has effectively, it has infiltrated pretty much every sort of asset class. Uh, and what with that, okay, what we're seeing is that indices are increasingly correlated. And I mean that not only not only on a sort of a US basis, but actually globally, okay? If you look at global indexes, you will find that, you know, through the use of algos, that actually they are increasingly correlated. So what are we gonna do about that, okay? Try, trying, to, trying to beat the algos at their own game, okay? In terms of swifter, faster execution is, it, you know, I think is a pretty pointless task, okay? You're, you're at, you know, you're, you know, you're, you know, as a former battle manager, it's about wherever possible, you know, you want to, you want to choose your battle space, you know, accordingly. You don't wanna, you don't wanna fight battles on, on, you know, on the territory where the other side have, a, have an advantage. So trying to trade, you know, faster, uh, faster and better than the algos is, is, is not really something you're gonna be able to sort of compete with. What we want to do is we want to actually almost sort of use the algo strengths against them. And what I mean by that is, as we see that those algos are increasing correlated, we're going to use that to increase our own benefits, especially when we try, sort of intraday trade the US indices. And, and hopefully maybe you can already see that. If I just bring up my drawing tool here, just on this, even this little example here is, there we go. So uh, what I have here, okay, is this is the uh, Dow Jones 15 minutes. This is the S&P 15 minute. And what we have here is the NASDAQ 15 minute, okay? Uh, and this is just a, a, one of the, uh, this is a basic, uh, here we go, bond. That's a US bond, US T note, okay? Which is, uh, it's kind of, a, in some respects, some respects opposite a little bit uh, differently from, uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the indices. But what we're really interested in is, as I said, Dow Jones, S&P, okay, and NASDAQ. And hopefully you can already even just see, looking at those charts, how, how correlated they are, okay? How, you know, how after they sort of came out of the, uh, the European session, yeah? after the European session, you know, we went into American news and we can see that the prices dropped, the prices dropped all the way. So uh, there we go. As I, as I say every week, I apologize for my uh, drawing tools. I am... Uh, I'm a better trader than I am an artist, ladies and gentlemen. But you know, the important thing is that is that you can recognise, okay, is where the okay, where we see those correlations, okay, where we see those correlations happening, okay, again and again, and that can actually give us a little bit of an edge. That can actually sort of just give us a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a a little bit of a sort of a head start. It gives us an opportunity to get ahead of the curve just a little bit when we see correlations like that occurring, okay? So when we see correlations like that occurring, it gives me much more confidence when I see a particular setup that I'm, uh, that I'm actually looking for. Hopefully you can see that to yourself. It, maybe if you're already an experienced indices trader, you already noticed that, but if you're new, okay, if you're new and you've not really investigated US indices, well, I suggest that, you know, you set yourself up a profile, okay, as I'll show you in a few minutes, okay, and set yourself up like that and set up a profile so that you can actually see all of those major US indices and watch how they operate together. So um, someone has said they've got some questions, please, please, you know, uh, feel free to uh, ask some questions as we go. If it's uh, relevant, I'll be very, very happy to uh, answer them there and then, or, or what I'll do is as, uh, as, uh, as we go, we'll, uh, we'll, take some, uh, we'll take some questions as we, uh, as we go there. So uh, Vincenzo says that uh, I always thought that the indexes are strange beasts to trade. Well, um, I think, uh, I think Vincenzo, you, you, need to, you need to treat them with the respect that you would treat any strange beast with. I would uh, heartily recommend that. But hopefully by this session, you know, maybe we'll take a little bit of the, uh, take a little bit of the fear out of those strange beasts, okay? Maybe I'll just start to little understand them just a little bit better, okay? Just maybe see them in a new light. And hopefully that would allow you to, uh, that would allow you to sort of, uh, um, you know, be sort of more open to, to engaging with them on a, on a trading basis. But uh, yeah, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the insight. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the thoughts. 
So, you know, in terms of, you know, what am I looking for in terms of how I want to intraday trade indices? Well, I'm just, you know, looking at uh, quite a few of the elements that I just, you know, we've talked about in uh, other webinars about intraday trading FX. I just like to use existing tool sets, okay, in my, uh, in my trading. Things like I'm curious about understanding previous highs and lows. I like to use things like double tops and bottoms, which is what I like to see in uh, my uh, intraday FX trading. Just very simple price action setups and, and combos of price actions, which we, excuse me, which I covered on a recent uh, webinar. By all means, you know, please check that out. Heartily recommend checking that out on the uh, on the YouTube channel. You know, because what he wants is, you know, once you train yourself to see these particular setups, all right, well then it just allows you to very quickly recognize these opportunities as they come your way on faster moving index markets. So here's just a uh, here's just a bit of a uh, one example, okay, of uh, operating with the, the Russell, and really all, all it is is just to very quickly show you, okay, that uh, you know Dow, Russell, S and P, Nasdaq. What all I want you to be able to see is you know just look at the amount of correlation there between those particular instruments, okay? As price uh, rallies up, it falls back. Or it does that on the NAS, okay, it does that on the Russell, and it does that on the US uh, 500, US S&P 500. Uh, and what you can see is that, you know, it, it sort of bounces off a resistance level here on the uh, S&P 500, which is enough to sort of take them all down. Then invariably we see price, you know, price bounces off the 50 period moving average, okay, and that's, uh, and that's where it uh, sort of um, that uh, price moves up from there, then it hits the Dow. Okay, it hits the uh, the Dow resistance level and puts in some rejection candles, which we can see before price actually starts to drift away again. So hopefully, as you can see, you know there's there is correlation there between the price action is quite closely correlated, and when it does that, and when I start to see price rejecting particular levels, when I see price sort of reverting from particular highs. That is when I start to get happy as an intraday index trader, and I'm and I'm happy to start to look at how those those opportunities, you know, will provide me trade setups. But you know, hopefully we can uh, we can see this. Okay, is that uh, here I've got is the uh, one hour chart. Okay, on the uh, uh, Admiral Markets uh, S Admiral Markets MetaTrader Four. Okay, we've got hourly charts on the on the Dow, on the S and P. Okay, and on the uh, the Nasdaq. But, and what I want you to just be able to see is how, you know, price, you know, price was pretty much in a very nice uptrend across all of them before price effectively rolled over, okay, and fell away during that sort of that, that session before actually coming back up again. And, and, you know, and what I'd say is that a 60-minute chart is a good place to start off for intraday trading, okay? Just look at your 60-minute charts, get a, make a profile like this. So you're able to just look at those charts, start to see, you know, where, are, you know, is there a good correlation going on between those uh, indexes? The algo is just quite happily plodding along doing their thing. Is there any particular levels, any particular significant levels? Okay, hence why I wanted you to draw them in. Uh, is there a particular, uh, you know, any particular big round psychological numbers, any particular sort of previous days highs or lows or even previous weeks highs and lows that one of those indexes running into that might provide an opportunity for a market to, uh, to mean revert from, in which case I'm getting ready to sort of set myself up. So, as I said, 60 minute is kind of, you know, your starting place, you know, just to get an idea of is there a particular bias and other particular areas, okay? Are there a particular sort of uh, uh, correlation? Is it strongly correlated? Because hopefully you can see that on your own, you know, on your own slides as well is that, you know, how closely that is correlated. And as I said, when they are operating like that, that gives me a sense of uh, confidence to be able to operate in the, uh, in that market environment. <clears throat> so on the flip side of that, okay, we just looked at one or two slides there where there's, you know, some great interrelation, uh, great correlation going on. But, you know, what it does do is when it very quickly notices that there isn't correlation, that's when I tend to pull back a bit. So that's when I sort of say, well, hang on a minute. There's clearly something happening. There's maybe some change going on, something going on that I don't know and understand. 
not, I'm actually just going to go hands off. And in this particular chart here, okay, what we have is that, you know, we can see the Dow here, okay, sort of, uh, you know, there's not really much correlation going on there, is there? We can see as the, as the Dow has been going down during the session, the NASDAQ has been going up. S&P has kind of been going sideways, okay? So they're not really very nicely correlated there, okay? Comparing that to the previous couple of slides, hopefully you can see, you know, they're, they're not correlated, okay? There's, there's something going on there. There's, you know, there's, there's a disconnect happening there. You know, and it could be that the market is changing. It could be that you know, there's just something particular big coming up. There's something particular orders going in or getting filled. We, we don't know, okay? The truth is, as a private trader, you, you don't know, okay? You just have to trade what you see. All right. Don't trade what you think. Don't think about, oh, well, it's this or it's that. You trade what you see time and time again. You trade what you see. And if what you're seeing is disconnection, lack of correlation, then just my suggestion is, do you know, what? OK, I'm just going to go hands off until I see that correlation come out. That's the best way for us to work. That's the best way for us to work, to, to, to operate. So hopefully, as I said, you can see that in the same way that when the correlation is there, it's very clear. Hopefully, when the correlation isn't there, you can also see how differently it looks for us. <clears throat> so, you know, what are we looking for? OK, you know, well, we said earlier that we're looking for just some of those simple price action setups that we see time and time again. So, you know, here we go. Let's get my drawing tool out. This is, you know, you can see here that, you know, we've got nice correlation there that was happening. OK. S&P here, Dow here, NASDAQ, okay. We had nice correlation, price dropped beyond news, okay, after the market opened, uh, and then invariably price pulls back. Price pulls back, and then what we see is that price, okay, hits, okay, the 20 period moving average here on the, on the, the Dow at the same time as hitting it on the S&P 500, at the same time being in that area on the NASDAQ. What we also see is that we get, you know, a little bit of kind of a, kind of a almost like a two um a two candle combo price action combo just a little bit of a rejection candle sort of doji followed by followed by a uh, you know a rejection candle which was also an engulfing candle which was also a key reversal candle happening okay at the 20 period moving average as um uh you know in a downtrend as part of a pullback it's a confluence of events going on uh, and so you know we were able to sort of pull the trigger on the trade okay being short that trade for the rest of the uh, of the u.s session as it ran away okay we saw those nice moves down there running towards the uh, uh towards the end of the session uh, and what i have myself here is uh, is that you know i have uh, i have a tool that draws in the kind of gray boxes for this sort of european session and the asian session and so that's just a you know when i just look at the chart it allows me just to focus on the price action during the american uh, the u.s session now admittedly with electronic contracts you can trade you know most of these uh, indices on an almost like 24 6 uh, basis but Personally, primarily for myself, as I said a bit earlier, you know, if I'm going to trade U.S. indices, I like to trade it during the main U.S. indices time, okay, because that's actually when the vast majority of players will be there, so when the vast majority of the volatility and liquidity will happen, and so I want to utilize that for my benefit rather than fighting against it. <clears throat> so, you know, this is uh, this is just a uh, kind of another example. We can see that. Dow here, okay, NASDAQ, S&P, came into the start of the US session, okay, and price price rose pretty strongly, hopefully you can see that price rose pretty strongly, uh, and then what we see is that, you know, we see like a selection of reversals, okay, so the uh, the sort of the, the Dow prints a bit of an M pattern double top there, okay, the the actual, the S&P, I would kind of more also more or less call that almost like a triple top there, uh, same with the, uh, um, uh, same with the, uh, uh, the NASDAQ, it kind of sort of like triple top, head and shoulders pattern, reversal pattern before they reversed for the uh, remainder of the US session there okay not as much on the uh, the Nasdaq but you know you'll get an indication of seeing which ones are overextended which ones are looking at you know being the uh, the sort of the, the ideal opportunity uh, for which for us to trade okay and that's that's what we're looking for There's, you know the correlated move followed by reversal patterns which are just standard reversal patterns allowing us to basically you know prices overextended so i'm looking to for it to revert back to the mean that gives me an opportunity to trade back into the sort of into the existing range that um, that we had uh, 
Um, here's uh, just other examples of, you know, that kind of correlation happening is that, you know, what we see is, you know, price comes into the American session and it drops, drops a little bit on the NASDAQ, drops on the S&P. But what stops it is, is price hits the 200 period moving average there, okay, on the uh, 15 minute Dow. Uh, we've got a couple, a little bit of a price action combination there. We've got, here we go, we've got a bit of a rejection candle followed by uh, an engulfing candle, key reversal candle, you know, and what we can see is that, you know, that kind of price reverse there, okay, price reverse is there on the Dow, but it also is reversing there on the S&P, and not as clear, but it reverses there as well on the NASDAQ as a bit of a uh, kind of more like a false breakout there, but what we can see is that, uh, you know, the Dow is in charge and it sort of starts to move up, and moves up to the, uh, the previous day's high, but we can see that the S&P 500, okay, and the NASDAQ follow them there, okay? It's a case of, in that particular instance, you know, just Dow is in charge, so follow the leader. That's what, um, that's what you're looking at, okay? Once you see how the price reacts together, and once you start to see it, you know, it, where it can reverse, okay? Spaces where it can reverse, and you start to see the similar price action across the three indices, that starts to give you an indication, there, okay? You know, the algos are working in a unison there. Price is looking to reverse. And, you know, we just, you know, as I said, we don't want to fight that. We want to actually utilize that for our own benefit. We want to sort of just almost just follow in their tracks, ride in their tracks. We're not trying to be, we're not trying to be a superstar. We're not trying to be a rock star. Okay. We're not just trying to let our ego prove to us that, you know, we need to be right. We just let, you know, let the market play its hand and then look to follow in its, uh, look to follow in its, in its big foot tracks. So uh, here we have a uh, examples here. Okay, is that you know uh, price is on the open and then price basically drops. Here's the Dow. Then price actually puts in a double bottom there. Okay, and it puts in a double bottom there on the uh, on the Nasdaq, and it puts in a double bottom there. Whoops, on the. Uh, on the uh, uh, on the S and P as well, okay. Uh, and what we can see is price moves up, uh, but actually what caps it is the 200 period moving average there, okay. So we can see that you know it's a bit far away from the Nas, but we can see that as price gets up to it, starts to put in rejection candles. It's just telling us that uh, that move is over for the moment. So you know once we've been in and long, what we're looking to do is basically to start to get ready to exit that trade. So you know, we had correlation at the start, then a correlation in terms of showing us a double bottom reversal. And then actually as price got up towards that 200 period moving average, we can see there was correlation there. Price wasn't just going to be able to break it together. And so that's a, that's a sign for us to exit the trade. Okay. As I said, I'm not trying to fight the market here. I'm just, you know, just, you know, seeing what the market is communicating to me and utilizing that myself. So, so, you know, a couple of final points there is that, you know, what we're looking to do is, you know, I, I suggest we build a profile for US indices on your MT4 and 5 platforms and watch how the markets react on an intraday basis. Just to take a little look at them, set them up. You know, if we've got time at the end, I'll very quickly uh, set one up for yourselves. Just take a look, you know, set up those US indices, set it up as a profile. Are they moving in unison, okay? Or are they moving separately? Are, are they correlated or are they disconnected? That's important, okay? Once you can see if they're moving in unison, well, look at, well, how does price react at previous highs and lows, right? Or was the one of the particular indices that was in charge, was the one of them that was particularly just leading the pack? And if it did, did it create an opportunity, okay? So a little bit of homework for you there as always, you know, I try and add in things from the takeaway, just start to work on that's what we want you to, um, that's what we want you to look at. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, US indices, you know, they're an exciting asset class to, to trade. They offer opportunity, but it's important to be thoroughly prepared and be aware of upcoming news items. Identify, is there a strong correlation? If there isn't, if they're disconnected, then my suggestion is to avoid. Have a look, is one of those indexes charged? Follow that for that particular session. Make sure that you're aware of, are there any particular static or dynamic levels of support in play? In which case, follow them, don't, uh, don't ignore them. Manage risk as always is intraday trading, manage risk. And if we've got a minute or two, let's just quickly sort of try and set up a, uh, a profile for you on, uh, on the uh, Admiral Markets MetaTrader 4 platform. And I'll be in the trader's yard this afternoon. So after the session, if you want questions about this, drop in there. Okay, join us and uh, I'll happily talk to you about that. 
Don't forget, okay, join us the next uh, session where uh, my colleague Marcus will be doing an interesting session on learning about trading addiction, okay, how to tell if you're addicted to trading, what to do to address your addiction, and how to know if you're ready to get back into trading. And that's all be on this Wednesday, 2 o'clock London time on January 29th, and you should be able to uh, see the uh, check your inbox for the webinar link or sign up on the Admiral Markets website. And as, uh, as always, you'll find there's lots of analysis and education on the AdmiralMarkets.com website, including a, uh, a, a diary okay, of scheduled news. Make sure you're always aware of that when you're doing some intraday trading. You can always contact us, hello at AdmiralMarkets.com, okay? or on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Admiral Markets, or facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global, and you'll find that link in the chat box. And please, as I say, join there, you know, give us a like, Drop us a comment, drop us a suggestion for future sessions. We're always happy to uh, to discuss that. So I hope you found that useful. It's a little bit of a, an introduction to trading US indices. We've got a moment or two left. So just bear with me a minute. I'm just going to quickly switch across to the uh, MetaTrader platform. I'll show you how I've set that up so that you can take away and work on that yourself. So just bear with me one second. We'll just quickly, uh, I'll just quickly shift across. Okay, hopefully just for a moment, you can all see my uh, chart. I've got up here the Admiral Markets uh, uh, Match Trader 4 Supreme Edition, okay? Uh, and what I have here is that I have a profile, as I said, you know, what we've got here is I've got the top, I've got the Dow Jones 30, I've got the S&P 500, I've got the uh, the NASDAQ here, and then I also have the uh, uh, UST note as well there, okay? So um, uh, it's uh, Admiral Markets don't provide uh, the Russell instrument, but you can find it elsewhere, but really all, as you can see already, you know, as long as you've got the Dow, the S&P and the NASDAQ, you have plenty of information there to be to see for a correlated market. As I said, start off with the one hour chart and, and you can see yourself already, okay, that uh, you can see all itself yourself that, you know, we had a bit of a drop off there from Friday, you know, and overnight, okay. A lot of this is because this was the, the weekend of uh, China and the cor coronavirus, okay, and that uh, spooked out markets a little bit and we can see that there's already been a bit of a drop off there and if i go to the uh, 15 minutes chart here okay as i said i have uh, i use a, a, a simple mt4 uh, plugin that basically colors in gray the sort of overnight in european sessions because as i said i just want to focus on trading those kind of us sessions there at the moment but hopefully as you can see today they're all looking very correlated aren't they okay the dow jones okay we're actually sort of just bottoming off the, uh, off the sort of uh, the kind of low of the uh, European range, which is the same on the S&P 500, the same on the NASDAQ 100. And I've now just saved this. I have this saved as a, uh, as a profile, okay, US indices intraday, okay, that I can just plug into, okay, and look at very quickly, get, you know, get a view of what's going on in those, uh, in those US indexes. So hopefully you can see there, okay, how very quick and easy it's to do. So as I said, set yourself up a profile, just set your charts up like this. Spend a few days just looking through, okay, look at, you know, draw in those uh, levels of support resistance from monthly, weekly and daily. Just look at how uh, price actually reacts, okay, at those particular levels, how it reacts at previous highs and lows. Does it put in, you know, kind of double tops and double bottoms? Does it provide you some price action combo setups? All of which will give you uh, uh, opportunities uh, to be able to trade intraday, uh, trade the US indices. So there you go. There's your lot, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found that useful. I wish you the best of success in your own trading. And I'll look forward to uh, speaking to you next week. Where uh, uh, And I wish you the best of success in your own trading endeavors this, uh, this week, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks.